Hey guys, before you start watching this video, I just want to give you a quick heads up. Yes, I know it's in a weird format. It's 4x3. Uh, I decided to try to do this whole video using my Insta360 ONE R as a review blogging tool and I had my settings wrong. I had it to 4x3, so I didn't find out till after I started to do the editing. Uh, so you're going to see this all in a weird format, but I'm really sorry about that and I just want to let you know there's also a really long video. There's a lot of segments to it. If you want to look at the description below, you can jump ahead to certain areas like how to do the folding and unfolding and how I did that part of the review and um, about the accessories all the way toward the end as well. But thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I appreciate all of you and I hope you enjoy this. Thanks. Hey there e-bike fans, so it's been about a week and a half since I've had the bike. I got one good long ride out of it and it's now time to go ahead and give you my first thoughts before I start making some changes to the bike. This is the last time you'll probably see the bike completely stock, just the way it came out of the box. So let's get started. Alright, so before I go really deep in depth about the bike itself from top to bottom or um, at least go over some of the specs or my experiences I'd like to talk a little bit about my experience with the company itself of electric I was been hearing great things about the company and I always make decisions not only on the product itself but also when things might need support will I get it? Um, that's a big deal to me because nothing is more frustrating than actually getting a product and having problems with it and not being able to get help especially when you pay something close to a thousand dollars I mean this was just under a thousand dollars when I included all my taxes and everything that I needed so at $899 plus tax it's it's a good investment I mean out of all the bikes that are out there for this type of value it's kind of incredible and not only that they also give some pretty darn good customer service so one thing I like to do is typically I like to test the company on their customer service just based on contacting them myself to see how their response is. Now I realize sometimes when you're contacting before you're a customer, you might get sales type customer service, which means that they're going to be eager to help you to gain your business. But you know, if you look at the Facebook forums that are out there for Electric XP, you'll look at some of the reviews, you'll see that a lot of people are just very satisfied with the way that customer service has been taken. Watch the YouTube videos on the reviews that are by um, some of the other uh, people that are out there. I mean, there's some, Jeremiah McIntosh has a great YouTube channel. So if, you, if you're looking in the market to get Electric XP, I highly recommend watching his videos. Uh, Jeremiah talks a lot about different changes that he's done. And that's kind of where I'm going to be going a lot with this bike as well. In fact, some of the accessories that I have. Uh, we're off of his links and his re uh, his recommendations. There's a lot that are actually my own that I just decided I'm going to try. Um, that uh, I got ideas based on what he was saying. So um, I contacted Electric and I wanted to ask first of all what the delivery was like. Uh, I had ordered it early in October and they said I think it was about October 5th or so. And then on the website it said three to five weeks. So my question basically was just really simple just to see you know if I'd get somebody on the phone and what kind of attitude they have if it's someone that seems like they'd be able to help in the future or I could contact if I had any questions and uh, the woman that helped me said that you know if I'm looking for a bike between three to five weeks it's probably going to be more earlier than the five weeks especially with the model that I'm looking for so my guess is that they had it in stock uh, I have seen other people say that they're very upset because it's taken longer um, but I was more asking, would it be five weeks before my bike shipped and I would have to wait the extra, so I'd be looking at six weeks, because I'm trying to estimate about what the weather would be like you know, by the time I was getting it, and just so that I knew uh, also how much time I had to prep an area to actually store the bike. Now, that's a little tip, by the way, if you are getting one of these and you're not uh, in a location that has a lot of storage space, keep that in mind that you're gonna need to keep this somewhere, so I can't keep it in the house, uh, so I do need I need to make space in the garage for it, and um, that's just a whole other thing I'll be talking about when I'm going over the bike. But you know, she did tell me that it'll probably be going out earlier in that frame of about three weeks, and I actually got the bike almost just a few days over the three week mark, so it was shipped a little early. Now the other thing that um, was a little confusing to me, but I have seen this also in the Facebook groups, is if you are ordering this bike and they're talking about ship times, you may get uh, a FedEx notice 
that it's ready to be shipped. But if you read the email carefully, it says that you have to give them at least about maybe a week or about three to five days, business days before it actually may get shipped itself. So, I mean, if you think from a business pers perspective and you have people that are waiting for shipments to come into, that needs to be uh, checked, put together, repacked, whatever it might be before it gets shipped out. If there's downtime, you don't want them just sitting around. They're, they might as well do whatever they can to prep for what whatever in advance they can. So it makes sense that I would see people start making the FedEx labels all lined up, ready to go. And that's when notifications go out to customers. Now, FedEx or um, Electric might want to rethink on that a little bit, uh, just only so that you know people aren't saying, hey, I got my notice, but the bike's not being shipped or, uh, or explain it better. Uh, that's the only thing I would recommend, but just keep that in mind. Hey, uh, I mean, to me, I was excited. I knew that it wasn't going to be coming in. It said that I mean, I kind of figured out, I work in that same type of business where things have to get shipped out, so things need to be packed, things need to get ready. And I would make a label in advance too. And all the customers who, as they come in, they get lined up and ready to go. So that was one thing. Uh, my label was made probably five or six days before it was actually shipped. And you know, FedEx gets that label and says, if we pick it up at this time, it'll probably be delivered to you by a certain time. So that's going to be way off because they're not going to pick it up until Electric says it's ready to be picked up. That was one thing. I mean, it didn't bother me because it was still earlier than I expected. And like I said, I had asked and she had actually mentioned it'd probably be in before the five weeks. And she was right. It was, it was great. Uh, that was another experience that uh, was very pleasing to me that at least it was pretty accurate um, on this. Because there's a lot of delays. Now, like I said, it could have been because the model that I asked for was in stock. There's a lot of people who are saying that they're still waiting. And I think they even may have ordered before me. I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot of bikes that are going out and still bikes coming in for them, but this whole electric bike industry is delayed and there's a lot of um, things that are holding it up, parts and everything that might be. So just uh, that's one thing that happened. The other thing that happened was I knew that I would be making some YouTube videos. I mean, I had it before I started making the other videos before uh, I got this bike. So I had asked them if it was possible to get a promo code just so that I could give it to you guys so that if you decided you wanted to pick up Electro Bike after watching this video, that you could actually uh, get the free pannier bags that, that come with it. I mean, you, you can add it onto your cart when you're ordering the bike. It's $49. And then with a promo code, you can you actually get a, a, the discount of the, the bags being taken off. So I waited about a day and I got a response that was uh, a kind rejection, I would like to say. And that says a lot about a company and how they are able to respond to customers in, I say, a proper way. Uh, there, There's a lot of requirements before they would give a promo code that can be actually mentioned out. So uh, for now, if you are going to be ordering one of these bikes, I'd highly recommend uh, looking for a promo code that's out there. I'm going to give you one now. It's an uh, e easy one to remember. It's Kev Central, K-E-V, and the word Central. All one word. Just stick that in. You need to order the bike first, add on the bags and then when you're checking out you're going to enter that kev central it's all one word again k-e-v-c-e-n-t-r-a-l and that will take the price off the bag so you can use his code like i said the way that they respond and the way they communicate is really good a great testament to them doing things right so um, that was another reason i decided you know i'm going to pull the trigger on this bike this was the best value that was out there and i'm glad also my wife is only about five two we need to make sure it was a bike she could handle because there's no way she's going she's gonna to be able to sit on the back of the Blackbird when that comes in. So this bike itself was another great opportunity. Plus, it has enough power. I'm a little concerned based on some of the reviews that it might be too powerful for her. But uh, after riding it, I'll be going over some of that. I think we can just tone it down where I'm not going to be worried. You know, it's so stable, very solid. Uh, all in all, first thing I'm going to say is that I love this bike. It's really a lot of fun. The table behind me are all the accessories based on all the reviews that I, that I had pre-ordered before this bike came in that was going to be for both my Blackbird and for this bike. Um, so, you know, a lot of things I got, I'll be going over each and every single one of those in other videos. Those are, you know, this is the e-products, I mean, e-bike products YouTube channel. So I'm going to be going over each and every single one of them. Some of them are good and good products and others, well, uh, I shouldn't have bought them. But, you know, it'll help you guys save money so or time if, uh, so you keep, avoid you from making the same mistakes. But let's go ahead and get started on the ins and outs of the bike itself so far and my experiences that I've had. Okay, so one of the first things I want to talk to, which might be a weird thing to talk about first when coming to a bike review, is the seat. 
Um, I heard a lot of people complaining about how the seat was a little hard on them and they needed to change it. And in fact, more videos I looked into, the electric XP reviews, more and more I started hearing people were just saying the seat was too hard. So before the bike even came in, I was looking, okay, what is the best seat everybody seems to be recommending? And it came out to be the Cloud9. And the other thing that they all were talking about was getting a suspension seat pulse. So before this bike even came in, these two things were already on order. I got a zoom seat post here and I will be doing a review when I install this. And then also the one seat that everybody seems to really like is the Cloud9. And again, this is another thing I will be reviewing, but I'll do it incrementally. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually just put this seat onto this and kind of give you a rundown on how it feels with just a suspension seat post because maybe you don't want to buy both and maybe the seat's okay. Um, or, and then after that, I'm going to actually put the seat and this post together and see how that goes and just see if that's enough on it. Because um, like I said, it, it doesn't mean you need to buy both at the same time. But uh, that's the first thing that I would say I bought right away because everybody was talking about how this seat was hard on their butts. And well, um, to be honest, I don't know if I just maybe have the extra cushion down there, but for me, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Now, I'm still gonna keep this because I know that my wife's gonna have issues with the seat being a little harder uh, on her bottom. She's not a bike rider per se, I guess in that way. Um, but you know, I didn't ride it excessively now if i'm taking a commute to work i'm talking an hour each way to ride this it may be different i mean i had only taken probably about a half an hour ride total and i stopped in between running errands that's the first thing i want to bring up is the seat okay now the seat here the height at the lowest point that i see it was at 31 inches and that seems to be the perfect height for someone my size which i'm kind of a short guy i'm only at 5'5 five five. and at that i'm lower than average so that seems to be this is the perfect height for me to stand where my feet are actually touching the ground. And let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay, so as you can see, I'm completely up standing with me being 5'5". Five five. So this hopefully gives some of you a, a gauge because um, uh, of how the height stands is. This is the seat at its lowest point and my feet are touching the ground flat, but it is quite uncomfortable between the legs. And this is exactly 31 inches inseam. Uh, so that's going to be where your height is. Typically when I ride, I bring the seat up about maybe three inches. I like full extension, I guess is the better way to put it, in my pedaling. And I do anticipate that when I put on the suspension seat poles and the Cloud9, it will be a little higher uh, automatically. But um, that's going to be something that we'll see when that happens. But this is, I guess, one perspective of the bike. Okay, so let me start with all the things I just really love about the bike instead of trying to go into all the specs. For one, I'm not like the expert bike guy. Um, I just have just been doing a ton of research on the different bikes because I wanted to get one. And I'm going to start with the fat tires. Having some fat tires on a bike, I've never experienced anything like it. And it's pretty awesome. In fact, even when I was renting uh, e-bikes to get a feel of perhaps what kind I want, I didn't get a chance to get a fat bike to rent. This just wasn't available. They, I rented actually a, a cheaper model of a, some kind of iZip that was a mid-drive. And then also I got a chance to rent a $4,000 high bike, which is more of a mountain style. It was a hybrid that can go some mount, mountain bike riding. It had a, a suspension fork in the front, but it had still, I think maybe two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch tires in the back. But these are four inch wide tires. I mean, they're really wide. So this kind of gives you an idea that it's pretty awesome on what you kind of get with this one, more traction. Okay, the one thing that's really cool about having four inch tires or at least fat bike tires is that if you, I'm not sure you can see this, but it says you can actually inflate to 20 PSI and it can go pretty low. They don't say what the lowest is. The lower you go, the softer it goes. So it has a, kind of like its own suspension. It's like riding on, I don't know, like uh, not, I wouldn't say a cloud, but something that's a little softer and can absorb a lot of the uh, the road bumps and, and little um, things that would typically be uncomfortable and really hard on you. So that can actually be a huge asset, especially if people are saying these seats are are too hard for them now the one thing about the way i like to make sure that i'm going to be riding is to get the most out of 
the distance. So I have it pumped up all the way to 20 uh, PSI. So that way I can maximize the distance that I can go. So my first ride, I felt everything and it was fine. I don't have an issue with it. Still, it's fat tires, so it's not as hard. It's still 20 PSI is pretty soft. Uh, that's the first thing that I really love about the bike here. The next, next thing is I'm going to talk about is the motor. Now, uh, it's a 48 volt, like you see here, and it is 500 watts. Being that it's 500 watts, it's quite a bit of power. And it is pretty good at the way that it just kind of takes off on you, can get you up to speed. I'm, again, what you saw, 5.5, five, and I'm only about 160, so, you know, for those that are heavier, it might be take a little longer, but I've heard so many great reviews of people who are uh, quite a bit heavier than I am and saying that this bike really still gets them where they want to go quickly. So I've experienced that now. The thing is, I the high bike that I did rent, I was expecting more out of a mortar, but then again, that was a mid-drive and it takes advantage of the gearing. This one is actually a hub drive mortar, and, but also this bike is a cadence sensor, which basically means there's a sensor a magnet somewhere in here as when you're spinning your pedals, and as this passes the magnet that's inside, it actually then basically it tells the controller to tell the motor that you are pedaling and that to give it some power. So you have your different levels of pedal assist, one through five, that is controlled here. This little button controller here that then transmits to the screen tells you how, how much that you want power to your pedal assist. And as long as the pedals are moving, it doesn't really matter how fast. Whatever assist level you have it on, it will move to that miles per hour range that you want. I found that if you have it on pedal assist one, you're pretty much kind of walking along with traffic on a sidewalk. Keep you kind of safe there from banging into anybody, a lot of control, but it's a really slow pace, but really nice. Uh, so, and then two, of course, is a little faster. Maybe if you're on an open sidewalk without a lot of people, that's kind of where maybe you want to be. In my area, we don't have a lot of bike lanes yet, and if you were to ride on the uh, main road here, you'd probably get killed. There's not even a lot of space, so you have to ride on sidewalks and kind of take it easy. There's not a lot of people, thankfully, on the sidewalks itself, so that's kind of good. The other thing that's pretty cool about this that I really like is, oh, is the pedal that I've already put one side up, so you, it's a foldable pedal, and to get it to that point, just push it in. And flip it up and then same thing when you're ready to take it out you just snap it down and there you go now that might not seem like a big deal but this is an extra like inch and a half and if you think of an inch and a half on both sides in a skinny garage like this that I have to get past the cars what happens is it this is a high probability of a um, scratch mark on a car uh, you know with the actual width that comes out of those so just that alone is pretty nice when you're folding it up and I need to get it to and from past the cars in the garage to the back of the garage uh, that's really nice to have those folding pedals now the thing is the pedals aren't all the best as far as comfort goes because of this high point right in the middle you feel your foot actually st stepping on that a lot so that's uh, if you're you know if you're typically riding a lot a bike riding a lot and you're not used to that it that takes a little getting used to but you know this this is metal and so it's a solid pedal it's still really good i really like that though that it folds uh, i would still keep it even though i don't like the lump in the middle i'm willing to live with that uh, one other thing you can do with this electric bike which is really cool is you can un take this little cover out plug in the charger and plug it right on the bike the other thing that's really cool about it is that you can also take the battery out by um, folding the bike in half and I'm going to show you that because that's not only a, a cool thing but it's also a really uh, it's a very difficult design to pull out the battery though uh, it doesn't make me want to actually get the battery out but I in, being that this is left in the garage uh, and you know our temperature I live in a desert climate gets really hot or really cold it's one of those things that I'm going to have to pull out the battery almost every day. So I've been practicing folding the bike to get the battery out so I can take it upstairs when I need to go in and charge it up every day. And I will go over the folding on this. It's a, another neat feature that this bike has, but it can be a little more cumbersome than 
it might look when you see other people doing it. So I've been practicing that and I'm going to show that as well. Uh, let's go over other things that I like. It comes with everything you see here. The bike came like this. This is, like I said, the last day you'll probably see everything stock the way it is. There's only one piece that's on there that you can't even see that I added, uh, which is for my camera mount that's to hold as a safety. Like I said, but it's under the bike. You can't see it. So other than that, it, as far as you're looking at it, it's completely stock here. The shifting gears that we have on this bike here is seven speed and i gotta say you know after my first ride i was beginning to realize that i really am a lazy rider i use the throttle mostly more than anything else so speaking of throttle i'm going to talk about that is probably one of another one of my most favorite features it's a twist throttle here very easy just like a moped or motorcycle it makes things really really easy to go ahead and utilize that if you're looking into electric bikes and you have, you're looking at a bike that doesn't have a throttle that's one thing I would say you might want to reconsider. The first two bikes that I rented, the high bike and the other iZip bike, did not have throttles, so I kept it as a class one. I don't know. It's just, if you have to keep pedaling all the time and you don't want to, you're too bad. You're going to have to without having a throttle. So this makes it the option to have it a lot more fun. I don't know why someone would not put a throttle on it, but considering that spike is $899 at the base price, to have a throttle on it, like I said, the value of this bike is absolutely incredible. Um, $899 still blows me away with everything you get here and how well it runs. It can go 25 to 40 miles uh, on a charge. That's pretty awesome, uh, you know, depending on how much you're, you're pedaling, hills and what you weigh, uh, all of those things factors considering. But if you help it out, you can go pretty far. They really do a great job getting the, the wires like as put together as possible and, and wrapped up there. You have also mechanical disc brakes. These are 160 millimeter disc brakes. Now, like I said, I'm not a bike guy. I mean, as far as all I know is that when you look at all the different people talking about different bikes and different reviews, 160 millimeter textual brakes are very common brakes to have. And if they stop you and they work well, what else do you need really? Okay, these are mechanical, so there is a difference. This is the first time I've actually ridden mechanical disc brake bike. So, there is a difference on how it feels. In fact, it's quite a bit different from uh, hydraulic disc brakes, but it's not a downfall to me. It works great. I mean, if I need to stop, I would yank on both brakes and you know, both tires will lock if I need it to. So you don't have an issue with that. The other thing that this has, they have um, cutoffs. So when you pull the brakes, it automatically sends a signal to the motor to cut uh, any power that's being put to it uh, which is a good safety feature because if somebody accidentally pulls the throttle at a stop it can start going but if you have this you're holding your brake so that's one thing if you know you have someone that's inexperienced on riding a bike and you're going to let them ride your bike and uh, you want to let them know always keep their hands on or fingers on the brake at least two two fingers on the brake because if it automatically starts to go, it will kick and make it start moving. They can just make it a habit to have one or two fingers always on the brake and always cut off the motor if there's any accidental push from the motor itself. Another cool feature is, again, it's foldable even at the neck it comes out. I'll be going over that. Uh, the shifting is, it's not the highest or high-end shifting, but it's very easy. You know, I'm not going to go any further because I'm not moving the bike, but that just gives you an example. You just push it up, it goes to the next gear push it, drops that down. I mean, it's just very, very easy. It's very easy to reach. I, um, brakes are easy to reach, They're easy to pull. Um, that little squeaky noise, by the way, it is annoying. Um, so there is also, also one of them, being that this is mechanical disc brakes, I know that Electric has been known that they tune their brakes up pretty well before they leave, but here's a clip that I'm gonna be adding in that will show you right now the issue i'm having with the brakes because when i go over the negatives of the bike because there's you know i'm not going to just tell you that there's all great things there's a lot of problems that are really minor but there are annoyances and it i would not take them as any discouragement of buying this bike for the price that you get it is still an incredible deal i'm going to say that again um also the rack here i don't know what this really ever is for even, even as a kid, when I used to deliver newspaper and we had racks that had this thing, this thing is useless for me. I've never been able to put anything that I thought would be safe to hold in that. But um, it has it, and I guess people like to use it somehow. I must be missing something. 
But um, you know, when you get something like that, you're gonna need bungee cords, just so you know. Uh, oh, another thing that's actually a pretty cool feature is that it does have a headlight integrated here and a tail light. Okay. Now they're not the brightest, so you know, you'll see that one of the accessories that I did buy, which you might have seen in the other video, especially if you watch the Amazon how to buy stuff cheaply, the Vaunt bike lights here these are rechargeable but i'm going to add those on because they'll blink throughout the day as well but um the front headlight is not that bright as well so i also will say that that uh this here that vaunt light there again is another rechargeable type unit that will be added on that has 200 lumens this is really a it's 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 a safety feature but it's not that bright so it doesn't really help on that part as far as um being able to give you visibility more than it is to be visible, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, as we're looking through this, I think I've covered a lot. It's you know, it's an aluminum frame, steel fork. Uh, it comes with fenders, which a lot of bikes, you know, in the now they're all starting to come with fenders. I think because of Electric and other companies where they're all Hem Hemingway now is out there, all coming with fenders. It, it's just something bike companies are starting to do, but definitely Electric was one of the. The first to go ahead and make sure they're including it on the bikes that come out there I see people taking them off but you know if you ever ride in even a little bit of rain or mud you can get pretty dirty and then you know uh, for a commuter like myself that's gonna be using this for commuting it's really good to actually have fenders and to know that I'm not paying an additional cost to have them added on that's great as well uh, let's see I also like to say that this is not always all that common to have a double chain guard on both sides so if you're looking on this side, you know, when I put my hand over here, I'm not touching the chain at all. It's actually just going over the guard, which means, I don't know, as if you've ever been just a regular bike rider, then you notice you don't ever have to use the rubber bands to go in and, or tuck your pant leg in your socks to make sure you don't get caught in that. So that's cool. I mean, it's only plastic, but hey, it does its job. The other thing I really like, which is pretty smart, because I think in the past, some of the other reviews I had seen, they now add this little bracket here so that when you fold the bike, it can rest on it. And it protects everything from getting smashed where I've seen one reviewer actually even just fold it up and lay the bike down. It's just a well-made bike all in all. And it's really nice. Now, they have the black and the white. I got the white because this is gonna be for my wife and I want her to be visible. And for me as well. You know, until my Blackbird comes in, I'll be using her bike to ride around. I think I've gone over most of the positives of this. Uh, you do have your adjustable neck here, so just by pulling this here out, you know, you can adjust it pretty quickly up, up and down. Let's go ahead and tighten that up. Back up. Alright, and then even the seat post here, you can easily just go ahead and, you know, pop this lever here and then adjust your seat up and down. Just by moving this lever. Um, so it's very pretty adjustable for anybody. Yeah. Let's go and tighten this up. It's all the way down because. All right. Um. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's get into the nitty gritty of some of the problems, or I guess some of the uh, not so great things that I've come across, so that you're just aware of. Like I said, both the good and the bad. Okay. Let's start on that next. Okay, so let's start with some of my little annoyances that I actually have. First of all, this plug here, I have a very difficult time getting this thing to stay in. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but it just doesn't like to stay in the hole. And that is annoyance, especially if it ever gets... If I ever have a chance that I'm actually running and riding in the rain, um, that's going to be one thing that I'm going to be always kind of worried about, that water is getting in there. Uh, luckily, it doesn't rain very much here in Southern California, but that is one of the big annoyances that I have. The other annoyance that I have, and as I said, it's a really minor annoyance because it doesn't rain much here, but some of the other things that happen that annoys me is the design of where to put the key in. Now, I know that a lot of other people have also mentioned this and... If you locate where the the hole is or this uh, covering part is here, right below that in the frame is the key. So you have to kind of feel your way around it and then kind of 
play around until the key actually goes in and you can feel it going in. So unless you go under the bike and look, you're kind of just uh, feeling your way to put it in there. And as you can see, it's not always the easiest thing to, to do it. And once it goes in, you turn it once and it turns on the bike itself uh, for the battery, the operator turn on the battery. So then the battery is now sending a signal that it's ready to go on. You hold the button at the top and the bike then turns on there. Now, the other thing is, if you need to remove the battery, you need to, well one, the key stays in whenever you're riding, so it has to stay like this. So I would highly recommend getting a, like a carabiner like this, or some kind of uh, key clip that you can always remove it from your, your rest of your keychain so that you don't have all your keys hanging here uh, while you're riding. And it's kind of like, I don't know, it just feels like a very vulnerable place to have a key kind of sit there. But it's easy to turn on and off, and once you turn it off, you just pull it out and it gets taken out. So. That's one thing that's a little kind of odd, stick it in and go. So like once you're used to it, it, it gets a little easier, but sometimes it can be a little hard um, to, to get that put in until you're used to it. So that's the second annoyance besides this, these two. The other thing is the biggest one that I have is getting this battery out when you're folding the bike. So let me go ahead and show you that right now. All right, so it's my guess that a lot of you probably won't be folding this bike a lot. Um, most people I think, don't have a situation I mean, where you're gonna to have to fold it every day, take the battery out and take it out to get it charged. I mean, I do have an outlet in the garage to go ahead and then I can charge it, but like I said, the temperatures sometimes get hot and cold in this area. Also, my area is just not the safest. If I have the bike charging, um, potentially someone can steal that or even the battery. Uh, I do lock up the bike in the garage, you know, very securely, but that's just one thing that has to be done for me anyway. But let me show you a little bit about the removal of the battery or actually let me show you first about the folding of the bike i actually took mm, probably about 45 minutes testing different ways to fold this bike so i wouldn't be as clunky as uh, with it doing it uh, while doing the video and i'll show you where the latch is uh, in in another part of the video here but basically there's a latch here that can be opened and uh, it pulls it so that it releases this section here and I have found, if you watch most people doing the folding of the bike, they do it all on this side and they're folding it amongst themselves. I've done it a few times that way, but I found that this is the easier way for me. So maybe, I don't know, see if put up the kickstand. I leave the handlebars up first. Make sure you don't have the key in, because if you do, you can easily bend it. Then, always position the pedal a little forward from down, right here. And you'll see why as the bike starts to fold. The latch is open. I can fold it this way. And that's kind of why I do it this way. And then you see how the pedal is now moving up. And it's there. And as I'm folding it, you're always watching it. Now I leave, the reason why I leave the handlebars up is so that's not an extra piece that's kind of like flopping around. Everything's kind of settled the way it is here. Also because cables are always really sensitive with most electronic stuff. So I like to make sure that I don't have a cable that might be getting folded in the way since it's all the way extended. Then what I do is I can go ahead and snap this down and then slowly bring it down, making sure my cable's not stagging everything, anything and put it together here. Now, I saw in some other videos that they said you should keep, this is comes when you get the bike. And I totally agree because if you're going to need to push the bike together close together, this is a great thing to keep your parts from bumping and scratching each other in the folded area here. Now, here's where it gets tricky. With the battery itself, you need to put the key in and unlock the battery so it can come out. Um, it's a good position now that I'll bring the camera over where you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so right here, we have a little pin looking thing that is sticking out. Let's see if you can make sure you can see that here. It's right here in this, this little notch. This keeps the battery from actually sliding out. So what you're seeing right here is the actual battery. So here's what gets to, I guess, one of my annoyances. Again, you have to put the key in the bottom and get it in there. Oh, okay. And now in order to, I, if you, I'm, 
I think you can see this. There is this cable, there's one of the thick cables coming here. In order to unlock the battery, the cable needs to be pushed away a little bit. Okay, so you turn it, and then, and then when I turn it more, if you see the pin has gone in, that was right there. Let me see, see how the pin will disappear inside to the case, so now the battery can slide out. But the key is still in, so you have to remove the key, otherwise that's going to hold the battery in, and you can slowly remove the battery. Now, <laughs> let me go ahead and open this up. Here's the issue. The battery will not come out when the bike is folded, and you have to. So, in order for someone like my wife to put out, she's going to have to kind of use some muscle in, you know, and I don't know if she's actually able to even do this yet, but the bike needs to be lifted before the battery can come out. And then it can come out. So here's what the key is being put into when it's turned on. Uh, one that gets that so that the lock comes out. And that, of course you need to be it needs to be pushed in or also for it to come out. Once it comes out, it locks into the frame there. And then of course one more rotation. And that turns on the battery so that it's sending juice to the uh, ready for the bike to be turned on through the controller. But uh, that is just one of those things. Okay, like it's off again, you push down on it, that comes out. Now I can take it upstairs to be charged. And then if I want to store the bike in its upright position unfolded, now I have to refold the bike up. Um, again, that's just one of my situations. Of course, a lot of other e-bikes that are not folding don't have the battery integrated. So you can just snap out the battery right from the frame itself, just uh, without having to do anything other than maybe unlocking it. But that is one of the things about this that is going to be a bigger annoyance than I had hoped. Um, every day I come home, I'm going to either have to fold the bike outside the garage before I can come in because there won't be enough room when the cars are in the garage for me to actually do the folding. It's the, Our garage is too thin for that. If you do buy a separate battery, they sell for, I believe, $2.99 on the electric website. And that would be a good solution to get a separate battery, charge one up, and then just swap them out, you know, day after day that comes in. Uh, I would get a separate one to be at home charging and then take one to work and still charge it at the same one at work. I would have to fold it or charge it at the wall at work or something. And I can actually take my bike into my workplace. So that's a benefit for me. Um, but that's one of the things that just be aware of. Uh, I will, let's go ahead and put this back in in case. So. Okay, I'm gonna hold it, otherwise it will just slide right out. I've also seen people in the, the groups talk about how their batteries have fallen out and they had to get replacement because the plastic cracked on them. So just keep that in mind as well. There we go. The key's in. And the pin is out. And I got the key out. So that's the other thing about there. Let me go ahead. Now, like I said, not too many people are going to have. You can just charge the battery right on the bike and not have to deal with all this. Uh, let's go ahead and put the bike back up together. Okay, now to, I guess, put the bike back together after I again do the same thing I did last time or just in reverse order I like to put the handlebar up first you're going to see one of the other reasons why I like to do it this way is because by lifting the bike up and actually unfolding it now here from this side once I do this the bike can pretty much put itself together after okay so put that together there and I snap this pin in and get this down here. All right. Uh, one of the things that Electric has done, I've noticed uh, from other videos versus now, is that there's just one silver pin here. You just push it up, and then that allows you to snap this down. And that is the locking, like a safety lock mechanism for you there as it comes down this way. Okay, so in the past, I guess 
people have to do this and then spin something to lock it in. The other thing that they have is, is on this side, we have a, also a safety here. So the way I do it is I actually use the part of my hand here to push this up and pull it. So I can do it all with one hand and that'll do it. Because it is pretty tight to get that and try to pull it. It's easier to do it this way. All right, and that does that there. Okay, so there's just a couple more things that I just want to go over before I finish off this video. One was the last um, ride that I had, an experience that uh, took me by surprise. So because I guess I'm a, a lazy rider, about 75% into my ride, um, my motor just cut out. The, the bike just decided it didn't want to keep on going. I uh, pulled over to the side and kind of turned off the bike, waited a bit, then turned it back on and it started to go fine again. It was a cold morning. So I guess what happens is if you push this bike too hard for too long and just throttle, the motor can overheat. That I didn't know would happen. So you do need to kind of be cautious with it. It's a 500 watt motor, I guess, uh, nominal. And it can go up to 800 watts and then put out that extra juice that you want if, if you need to. There's a setting in the display that you can make adjustments to unlock it so that the bike can go up to 28 to make it a class three. Uh, I did that after um, my, I guess, uh, my little stall out and uh, decided hmm, I wanted to maybe go a little faster, but it was all downhill from there as well. So, you know, I unlocked the bike, made it go to its maximum speed, and then uh, pretty much rolled the bike home at its highest level without any other problems after that. At first, not knowing what happened, when I did look up to see what happens, I guess electric has made a safety within the bike that if it starts to overheat or uh, senses that it's, it's being pushed too hard it will just cut off until it cools down so keep that in mind you can burn out these motors if you just push it too hard they're not made to just keep maxing it out you can watch what kind of current is being put out through the bike and uh, I don't know the exact settings but there's a certain level that you shouldn't be exceeding for long extended periods of time that includes going up hills and just uh, pushing the bike really hard during uphills as well this uh, that's one thing that's kind of surprising to me some of the other bikes that I like I rented had no problems continuously pushing, but I was pedaling and those were torque sensing bikes. So obviously I was putting a little bit of pressure to help out the bike itself. The bike is awesome. I just have to again say that I am, we are so glad that I have this bike. I can't wait for my Blackbird to come in, which is a bigger full size. It's a 24 inch fat tire bike. This is an amazing bike to do it. So again, this is the last time you'll see it completely stock. Uh, the last segment of the video, I just want to go over really quickly some of the things I have on this table behind me. The time that I had to wait for the bikes to come in was a little dangerous, I guess, because what happens is I keep shopping for accessories even before I got it, just knowing I want them ready when I get the bike. Like, for instance, one thing everybody should probably always consider, even from day one, is get a bottle holder of some sort. This bike does not have bottle bosses. So that's one of the things that I'll be showing uh, as going through all the accessories. Those will all be separate videos, but I just want to give you an overview of what I thought I might need in advance and what I ended up buying. The other, um, I guess, big detriment was that, or maybe benefit, was that Amazon had their Prime Day. And um, I was able to take advantage of a lot of great deals uh, for some of the products that I was able to get. So let me go ahead and show you some of the stuff real quickly of what was there. And uh, I suggest, if, if you know this was helpful, like this video, if um, you're interested in seeing reviews on these products that I'm going to be going over really quickly right now before the, the, I end this one, um, make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell so that you're notified as soon as I get those videos up. So let me go ahead and show you what's on the table. Okay, so I'm going to start with this corner here. If you've already uh, seen my unboxing video. Um, if you haven't, we should check it out. But if not, there's my tips also. One of the things I said is uh, you should actually read the manual ahead of time before you get the bike. Now this came with the bike itself and I realized probably should have read it because it's actually available on their website at electricebikes.com. Um, e so go to this website here, look up the bike itself, go to it, and at the bottom you'll see the PDF for this. I highly recommend reading this before you get your bike so you know a lot more about what's in it uh, under here, this is actually the charger. A pretty decent charger. I mean, it's like, I think, four to six hours to go ahead and uh, do a full charge on it. So let's go ahead and also talk about, this is the extension seat post I was telling you about, or the suspension seat post. Um, a 31.6 and uh, the Cloud 9. Again, the seat that people are talking about. This is the uh, 
bike toolkit I bought in advance also knowing that I'd be needing probably some tools that will specialize there's actually another tray behind with every tool that most of the specialized type bike tools are available uh, I have actually a video of me unboxing these uh, Bordeaux Abyss uh, locks um, these are folding locks and this came as a twin pack so it came with two locks and four keys e-bikes are usually typically larger framed even the bike that I anticipated I was gonna get first without even before knowing I was gonna get an electric bike was the um, Blackbird that these typically I was worried would not be long enough or be have enough locking points they're expensive bikes so you want to make sure you keep them safe my area is safe enough that this would pretty much deter most people that live in maybe criminals that come into our area that might be looking at it so this was another accessory you should buy ahead of time because if you have it if you don't you're gonna to have to go buy it right away you might you might be able to save money now by shopping ahead of time i'd highly recommend looking into getting some type of do your research on what type of security you should put on your bike now another security item that i actually bought was this here and this is the uh motorbike bicycle anti-theft this is a two-pack because w once i knew i was going to get the electric bike and my blackboard i bought a two-pack so we have this one too uh, that I'll be doing a review on. Of course, lights, extra lights are always helpful to have uh, on it. There'll be links to everything in Amazon. Those are affiliate links, so I, you know, I will get a, a small commission if you do buy through my links. But and I appreciate the support for the channel. Another thing that, like I had mentioned, is the light on the electric bike is not very bright. So these are uh, flashlights, tactical light flashlights. They use um, 18650 rechargeable batteries or three AAA batteries. Now, because I have 1860 batteries uh, for another tactical light, I have a, a charging station that I can do four at one time. This is a two pack again for both lights or in case I, I will be riding at darker times, especially during the winter, uh, maybe two lights is what I was thinking I was needing. I need to hey, just pick up some of those mounts that can snap them onto the handlebars. And speaking of handlebars, as you can see, this handlebar is not very wide. There's no, hardly any space for accessories, plus the bend will make it harder. So what's usually recommended is to get an extension. And this is aluminum alloy, and it's super, super light. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing a review on this too. I actually have a carbon extension coming in, um, I think in a couple of days. That I'll be actually doing a comparison video between the two because it's really just an extension. There's so many different ones. I always wonder what's the difference. So I bought two so I can you know show you guys differences. Looking at some of the uh, other reviews, one of the guys talked a lot about how he had almost like some kind of nerve damage from the electric handle grips. Uh, to me, I don't have a problem with these grips. They are really hard, um, but. I guess the way I hold my grips, I don't have a problem with any type of discomfort yet. But again, I haven't ridden for more than longer than a half an hour at a time. Uh, my commute will probably give me otherwise. So I decided to buy these in advance just in case. I am anticipating a problem or not knowing exactly what I need to do with putting it on this side when there is a throttle that's going to take it. Maybe I have to cut it on, uh, on that just to get at the end. I'm not sure. But whatever is the easiest, I'll go ahead and make sure I can get those on there. Uh... First thing you should always buy, by far, are mirrors. It is so scary to ride, especially in my area, the way cars come up behind me, and um, they drive really fast, that I can't see without mirrors. So I got these cheap ones, and I regret it. I already tried putting this on right away, because it's the one the first thing you should try to put on, but um, these are worthless. So don't buy these. Uh, I still got to find out some better mirrors. I don't want mirrors that actually extend past the handlebars. I've actually seen some videos of people who got into accidents because they have things that extend the, the handlebars and I just find that as an extra hazard. I want maybe something that can come over, but also I need to test it to make sure that the bike can still fold without those mirrors getting in the way. That's why I thought these might be good. Don't get mirrors like this because here you won't be able to see anyway past your, your body's going to be in the way. And uh, you can't put it on these grips here. So I, if I have the other grip on, maybe that will work. But on these grips here, it's too wide for it to stick on there. Plus, this cheap plastic is about to break already. So I uh, don't recommend that at all, even though it's on the table. This is a water bottle bag. I didn't want to get a cage because I have different size water bottles. And I was afraid that, I, that not all the bottles would fit. 
So it's more like a bag, and in case I didn't want to use it as a bottle holder, I could stick stuff inside, like my wallet, and it'll close. It also is insulated, so it might keep drinks cooler if it needs to be. So that's pretty cool, and like I said, I'll do a review on that, adding it on. I bought a tire gauge. I recommend that because you need to check, you should check your tires often before you ride. Um, that's just, it's not only a safety factor, but uh, it's just easier to know if uh, you have the right pressure and you can keep it the same. These handlebar jacks, I got this a while back when Kyle from Bolton E-Bikes talked about them. This is great. I actually have a video of them on the electric with the bike upside down. Um, and I'll show that because there is a problem, uh, oh, which I forgot to mention, is that my brakes are scraping and they need to be adjusted. So the other thing is I got a cargo net for a motorcycle side because I'm going to be having a cooler that I need to take to work. Uh, this is a four pack of bells. I don't know, I've seen a lot of other electric bikes that had bells on them, but mine didn't come with a bell. So I know, um, but I had these bells bought and they come up to like a dollar fifty each when you buy them in this four pack. Another thing I bought was a 50 pack of various size Velcro straps. And there's like a whole bunch of different, I'll put a link to it so you can take a look at it. But these have already been extremely help, helpful when I tested putting some of these things on. But Velcro straps are a lifesaver. Carrying these around even, if you ever get a flat, you can actually put these or maybe some of the longer ones around the tire and rim to keep the tire on the rim where you can walk it home. You know, especially if it's a back tire if you need to. You know, for other things to just strap on the bike, like even these, this will make it so much easier for me to strap it. I've already tested it. It straps really well. So I highly recommend Velcro straps. And that was like not very much either for the whole 50 pack. A bicycle phone holder. I think this is another thing that I may not end up using very much. I kind of looked at it. It's kind of cheapy. I know it'll hold. What I think is a little more safer is one of those bags that actually goes on the frame that has the phone inside a bag, bag which will also keep it uh, water resistant or waterproof from rain. The uh, mechanical timer, you know, if I set this on a mechanical timer for six hours, I will, you know, or four hours, however long I think it's going to take to charge up and not worry too much about it. So those mechanical chargers are, are going to be actually probably indoors because I'll be charging the, the battery in the house. I'd love to hear what people have done while they were waiting. Tell me if, if you, you know, have time to comment on this video before you see on the other videos of these accessories, which one you want to hear or see about first. Because obviously you, you can tell there's a lot of videos I have to go ahead and, and go through. I've already done the uh, bike hand review. If you want to take a look at that, go through the channel. You'll be able to see that as well. But um, I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified when I start um, getting all these. I will put the links to all of these in all the videos moving forward. And uh, if you go to ebikeproducts.com, uh, I should hopefully have that site up and running soon where I will also have all the links to the videos and individual videos per product that's on this table here. But uh, thank you for staying all the way through this video. I appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next video.